Shadow Lake, a place where legends are born and nightmares come alive. Nestled deep in the Montana wilderness, this seemingly tranquil body of water harbors secrets darker than the depths of its murky waters. I first heard about it in Raven's Hollow, a tiny speck on the map that most folks drive right through without a second glance. But there's something different about this place, something that hangs in the air like a heavy fog, weighing down on your soul. It was in a dimly lit diner that I first caught wind of the lake's sinister reputation. The locals spoke in hushed tones, their eyes darting nervously as if the very mention of the lake might summon something sinister. I couldn't help but lean in, drawn by their fear and the mystery it promised. An old-timer, his face weathered by years of hard living, leaned in close and whispered, Son, that lake ain't natural. It's hungry, and it don't care what it eats. Been that way since the town was founded. Some say even before that. His eyes, clouded with cataracts, seemed to look through me as he continued, I've seen things out there. Things that'll turn your hair white and freeze the blood in your veins. The phantom, they call her. Half woman, half beast all terror. Despite the warnings, I couldn't resist. The lake called to me, its secrets pulling me like a moth to flame. As I drove down the winding road leading to Shadow Lake, the trees seemed to close in, their branches reaching out like gnarled fingers trying to hold me back. The forest grew denser, darker, as if trying to swallow the narrow strip of asphalt. I found an old cabin on the shore, its windows dark and empty, like the eye sockets of a skull. As I stepped out of the car, the air felt thick, oppressive. Something was watching me, I could feel it. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end, and a shiver ran down my spine despite the warm summer evening. As night fell, the fog rolled in. Thick, unnatural, it seemed to breathe, pulsing with malevolent life. Tendrils of mist crept along the ground, coiling around my ankles like spectral serpents. The world beyond the reach of my flashlight ceased to exist, swallowed by the impenetrable white void. Then I heard it, a howl that chilled my blood. Not quite wolf, not quite human. It echoed across the water, reverberating through my very bones. The sound spoke of hunger, of rage, of something that should not be. They say the phantom haunts these shores. A woman, or something that used to be a woman, cursed by an ancient evil. The stories vary. But they all agree on one thing. She's been here for a long, long time. I caught glimpses of her that first night. A flash of pale skin in the moonlight. Eyes that glowed with an unholy fire. Long, matted hair that seemed to move with a life of its own. And always, always, the wolves at her side. The next day, I dove into research, determined to uncover the truth behind the legends. The town's history was a tapestry of tragedy and unexplained disappearances. Every few years, someone would vanish near the lake. Campers, hikers, sometimes even locals who should have known better. The police reports were vague, full of inconsistencies and dead ends. As I delved deeper, I uncovered a horrifying truth. The lake wasn't just taking people, it was changing them. I found reports of strange sightings creatures that were neither human nor animal prowling the woods. Tracks that started as human footprints and morphed into something, else. Claw marks on trees far too high for any known predator. But the real breakthrough came when I found an old diary, its pages yellowed with age and terror. It belonged to one of the town's founders, a man named Jeremiah Holloway. With trembling hands, I opened it, and the secrets of Shadow Lake began to spill out. May 15, 1845, the entry read. They took Sarah to the lake tonight. Her screams. Dear God, her screams. We had no choice. The crops were failing, the livestock dying. The entity in the lake promised prosperity in exchange for sacrifice. May the Lord forgive us for what we've done. The phantom wasn't just a ghost. She was the first sacrifice, transformed by the lake's dark power. But why? What was this entity that demanded such a terrible price? The diary spoke of an ancient presence in the lake, something that had been there long before the first settlers arrived. Something that hungered. My search led me to an old shack deep in the woods. As I approached, the air grew colder, and I could hear whispers on the wind, beckoning me closer. Inside, I found evidence of captivity. Claw marks on the walls, 
chains corroded by time and something far more sinister. And there, scratched into the floorboards, a symbol I'd seen in Jeremiah's diary. A spiral surrounding an eye, ancient and malevolent. As night fell again, the fog thickened. The howls grew closer. I tried to find my way back to the cabin, but every path led me deeper into the woods. The trees seemed to shift and move, hurting me towards the lake. I was lost, trapped in a maze of mist and terror. That's when I saw her. She appeared before me, this woman thing that had once been human. Her eyes held centuries of pain and rage. Antlers sprouted from her head, tangled with her wild hair. Her fingers ended in wicked claws, dripping with some dark liquid. She was beautiful and terrifying, a primal force of nature twisted by dark magic. Join us, she rasped, her voice like shards of glass in my mind. In the depths, forever, images flashed before my eyes, centuries of sacrifice, of transformation. I saw the entity in the lake, a writhing mass of tentacles and eyes, ancient beyond comprehension. I saw the town's dark bargain, the price paid for their prosperity. And I saw what awaited me if I accepted her offer. The wolves emerged from the fog, surrounding me. But these weren't normal wolves. Their fur was matted and rotting, their eyes glowing with the same unearthly light as the phantoms. They moved with an unnatural grace, more extensions of the phantoms will than individual creatures. I ran, my heart pounding, lungs burning. Branches whipped at my face, roots seemed to reach up to trip me. But you can't escape Shadow Lake. Not really. The forest itself was against me, the very land conspiring to keep me trapped. I found myself at the shore, the dark waters lapping at my feet. Something moved beneath the surface, something vast and hungry. The phantom and her wolves closed in behind me, cutting off any chance of retreat. The choice is yours, the phantom said, her voice almost gentle now. Join us willingly, or be taken. But all must feed the depths. For a moment, I considered it. The promise of power, of transcending my mortal form. But in the phantom's eyes, I saw the truth. An eternity of hunger, of servitude to the thing in the lake. A fate worse than death. I chose a third option. I dove into the lake. The water was cold, so cold it burned. I felt things brush against me in the darkness, heard whispers of promises and threats. Tendrils of something ancient and terrible tried to wrap around my legs, to drag me down to the depths where the entity waited. But I swam, fought against the current that tried to claim me. Somehow, I made it to the other side. As I dragged myself onto the shore, I heard the phantom's scream of rage echo across the water. It was a sound of frustration, but also of promise. This wasn't over. It would never be over. I made it out, but part of me is still there. In my dreams, I hear the howls. I see her face. I feel the pull of the lake, calling me back. Some nights, I wake to find myself standing at the window, staring out into the darkness, my body trying to answer that call. I'm leaving Raven's Hollow tonight. I've warned the locals, told them to stay away from the lake. Some listened, some didn't. But I know it doesn't matter. The curse of Shadow Lake lives on. It's patient, it's hungry, and one day, it will claim us all. Because you can't escape Shadow Lake. Not really. It becomes a part of you, a darkness that grows inside, waiting for the day you return to its shores. And as I pack my bags, preparing to put as much distance between myself and this cursed place as possible, I can't shake the feeling that it's already too late. The fog is rolling in, thick and unnatural, even though we're miles from the lake. And in the distance, I hear a howl. The phantom is calling. And God help me, part of me wants to answer. This is the truth of Shadow Lake. A truth that lives in whispers and nightmares. A truth that waits in the depths, patient and hungry. And now, it's a truth that lives in me. Remember this tale, dear listener. And if you ever find yourself near a placid lake in the Montana wilderness, with fog that moves against the wind and howls that chill your soul, run. Run, and pray it's not already too late. For Shadow Lake is always hungry, and it does not care what it eats. Last edited just now.